everyone, welcome to today's episode. Today we're going to be making this lovely little pouch which has a little drawstring on it. It's great for storage and it's so simple and quick to make. Or if you've got any fabric lying around, today's the episode for you. So join me now and we'll start making. So first of all, we want to attach the smaller rectangles to the bigger rectangles. Completely optional if you want to do this. I just wanted to have a slightly different base to my, ba um, to my pouch. But again, you don't have to do that. You can go straight into the next section. Put the right sides together and pin and sew along the edge. done just set those aside okay now we're going on to the little applique and then we just need to copy that corner all the way right onto the other three corners but the way I do that is just by cutting that corner off and then folding the applique into half and then half again and then I can just snip the corners just try and be as accurate as you possibly can Alternatively, you can use a tool that will help you to create perfect corners, or you can just leave it square. where you want to put it onto the front of the panel uh, just make sure you leave enough space at the top for, for folding over the, the top section because obviously you will be making a little loop for the, um, uh, the ribbon to go through so just bear that in mind that you don't put it too close to the top Once you've aligned it, you need to pin it down. Okay, so the next step is we're going to stitch it onto our front panel. I've used a decorative stitch to go around my PK. I just like the look of it. It just looks a little bit more bohemian and really it's up to you most sewing machines do have different de decorative stitches it's just a matter of experimenting with yours i found some lovely ribbons and little decorative trims that i'm going to use on mine this is completely optional and it's up to you if you choose to do that yourself at this stage you can have a little play around and see where you want to put trims. I'm only going to stitch the green ribbon on at the moment because the cream 
ribbon is actually a little bit thicker so it won't be so good for when I iron the interfacing onto the back. So just for now it's just the green. It's a good idea to always finger press open any seams that you've sewn so that when you do come to put any interfacing on it's nice and flat and also to reduce any bulk in your sewing. Let's iron on the interfacing. Just make sure you have the right side down. So it should be a slightly sticky, gluey side. If it's not sticky, it might just be slightly rough. That side will go onto the towards the side that you're going to actually glue down. And the other side should be a smooth side for you to actually iron. We'll just give the fabric a quick iron before we glue it down. iron center outwards just so you can avoid any creases in the actual um, interfacing. I've only put the interfacing on the main two front panels that you'll see, not on the lining, just because we want the lining to stay nice and soft inside and we just need a little bit of stiffness for the outside of the bag. Now what we want to do is just flip over one side so that both good sides are facing together for both the lining and for the outer part of the bag. When it comes to stitching, we don't want to stitch all the way round for both the outside of the bag and the lining. So for the main outside part of the bag, we're actually going to leave an inch on either side of the top section. So if you can see here, I've actually drawn two lines straight the way across, which will demonstrate where the ribbon's going to go through. For the lining, we're going to stitch all the way around, but on one side, we're going to leave it open with a gap of about eight centimeters. Okay, so before you sew these two together, just put two pins where you've marked the opening, just in case you decide that you want to carry on stitching absent-mindedly like I do sometimes, and uh, you completely forget to stop. So the pins will just remind you to stop sewing. We're going to take the outside of the bag and turn it the right side out and we're going to then put it inside the lining but the lining will stay as it is. around the top. When we've done that, we're going to turn it inside out through the little hole that we left in the opening of the lining.
the opening and then tuck the lining into the, the outside of the bag. I've ironed it again just to give it a nice crisp edge on the end so that it's easy when we put the ribbon through. Might be worth just giving yours a quick iron too. We're getting right towards the end now. So the next bit we're going to do is we're just going to stitch around the outside of the bag. And remember where we left an inch, that's where we're going to stitch. So we're going to do two parallel lines, leaving the inch in between. Be careful that you don't stitch the two sides of the bags together. Remember I was saying you need four times the width of your bag uh, of ribbon so just just double check that you have that just fold it in half and half again and um, then just measure it against your bag. Okay what we need to do with the ribbon we're going to cut it in half. And literally just feed it through um, do one from one side and one from the opposite side you want to go all the way around the full loop and come out the same side that you've started with we have it a nice simple drawstring bag to use for whatever you need it can be made bigger or smaller depending on the rectangles that you cut so you can go to town and make lots <laughs> next time I'll be making a small zip pouch so if you're interested in viewing any more of my videos please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I shall see you next time no. ah!